This is the first of three videos where I'll walk you through the requirements of the internal assessment for this course. The IB requirements for the internal assessment are fairly specific and also fairly ruthless in terms of the marks awarded. Missing one point takes you down from a complete 100% to partial 50% in a category. So it's important to pay attention to details and make sure that you're following this guide carefully as you write your lab reports. The first part of the IA is the design. I usually assign this as an in-class individual assignment to be done within a single period. You'll be given a prompt and will be required to design a lab based on this prompt. In the example in this guide, the prompt would have been something like design a lab that looks at some aspect of water flowing from a hole in a can. It's important that you specifically state both the independent and dependent variables in your research question and that you specify the context of the experiment. An important research question for this prompt would be, how does the radius of a hole in the bottom of a cylindrical can affect the initial flow rate of water from the hole? It was important to specify initial because the flow slows as the water escapes from the can, and cylindrical because the shape will affect the rate of flow. In the hypothesis, you must state the type of relationship you think there will be between the independent and dependent variables and also give some kind of rationale based on your own experience. Some teachers require that you research your hypothesis in order to provide more robust justification. But as you will be planning these labs in class, you will not have a chance to do any research. The hypothesis for the example is, the flow rate of the water should increase as the radius of the hole increases, as it will allow more water to flow through the hole at a time. It is believed that the relationship will be quadratic, as it is probably linear, linearly related to the area, and since a equals pi r squared, it is likely that the flow rate, q, will be proportional to r squared. Next, you will list the independent, dependent, and control variables in your experiment. Control variables are the most tricky, as students are often overly exhaustive, listing everything they can think of, regardless of whether or not it will likely affect the experiment, or they miss an important variable that would invalidate the experiment if not controlled. In the water can example, the independent variable was determined to be the radius of hole in the bottom of a can. And the dependent variable was determined to be the initial flow rate of the water. The control variables were the can used, the shape of the hole, round, in the initial volume of water, the amount of time the water is allowed to flow, the angle of the can, and the liquid used, water. Uh, notice that the dimensions of the material of the can were not individually specified, but were all encompassed in the control variable can used. Also, variables that are of little importance to the experiment, such as the height of the can above the ground and the location of the hole in the bottom of the can, were not included. Finally, variables that are unlikely to change during the experiment, such as the force of gravity and the room temperature, were not included. In outlining the apparatus and procedure, the most important thing is that the person reading the lab understands precisely what you are planning to do and how you are planning to control the variables in the experiment. A well-drawn diagram can be very helpful in making your explanation clear. Make sure that your procedure includes at least three trials where you repeat the same measurement with the same independent variable multiple times. The number of trials should be chosen based on how much uncertainty you expect in the measurements. Reasonable values of the independent variables that you plan to use in the experiment must also be included. You should have at least five of these values. The settings on the electronic equipment, any calculations you will have to do in order to get your independent and or dependent variables, and also some indication of how you will keep each of your control variables constant. This last point is actually really important. It might even be worth it if, once you've written your procedure, you go over it with your list of control variables and make sure that you've addressed each and every one of them. Here is an appropriate procedure for the water can experiment. Notice that the diameter of the hole was measured using a vernier caliper instead of relying on the measurement of the drill bit. We, we will often be using well-worn equipment in our experiments, and it's important to rely on measurement rather than on labels. Certain control variables, such as the amount of time the water is allowed to flow, are speci specified explicitly, five seconds, but others are implicit. 
As it never mentions getting a new can, it can be assumed that the same can is used throughout the experiment and it doesn't need to be specified. Step 8 and 9 are sufficient for outlining the trials and the different values of the independent variables. Um, and step 10 shows how the calculations that were made in order to determine the flow rate, which is the dependent variable. The planning section, like each of the three sections in the internal assessment, is evaluated out of six. Each aspect is either complete, a two, partial, one, or not complete, zero. In order to get complete, the criteria has to be done almost perfectly. Most students get a lot of partials. The first aspect of uh, design relates to laying out the experiment, identifying the variables, and formulating a good research question. Aspects 2 and 3 relate to the procedure. Aspect 2 is focused on making sure that all of the variables are properly controlled in the experiment. And Aspect 3 is focused on outlining an experiment that is workable and will produce sufficient useful data. Notice how much emphasis there is on the procedure. It is well worth it to take the time to learn how to write a good procedure and to look over your procedure carefully after you have written it to make sure that you haven't missed anything.